In the early 1950s, the skies over the Korean peninsula became the stage of a massive aerial clash, where the newly formed United States Air Force and its allies were pitted against the Soviet-backed air forces of North Korea and China. The onset of the conflict saw the United States controlling the skies, employing its superior technology to overcome North Korean air units. But this dynamic shifted dramatically towards the end of 1950, with China's intervention and the subsequent deployment of the Soviet-designed MiG-15. What followed was an era of fierce air engagements, most notably in the region dubbed MiG Alley, as both sides grappled for air supremacy. The Korean War introduced a new technology being used at scale for the first time, the jet engine. This conflict wasn't just another war, but the dawn of a new era in military aviation. It bridged the gap between the propeller-driven days of World War II and the advanced aerial combat of the late 20th and early 21st centuries. The lessons learned then still echo in today's cockpits, war rooms, and design labs, profoundly shaping modern aviation. After 1945, the U.S. had cut its wartime military presence in the Asia-Pacific significantly. However, it still maintained a sizable presence in Japan, Guam, and other vital outposts. In June 1950, the U.S. Far East Air Force had a fleet of 365 F-80 Shooting Stars, 32 F-82 Twin Mustangs, 26 B-26 Light Bombers, and 22 B-29 Super Fortresses in the region. In contrast, the North Korean Air Force was equipped with 162 aircraft of World War II vintage, such as the Yak-7 and the Ilyushin-10. This aging fleet soon found itself outclassed by the technologically superior U.S. Air Force in the opening weeks of the conflict. During this initial phase of the Korean War, the U.S. deployed its F-80 Shooting Stars and F-82 Twin Mustangs stationed in Japan to significant effect. The F-80 in particular showcased good operational range, reaching up to 1,000 miles, helped by attaching 265-gallon fuel tanks to the aircraft's wingtips. The plane was notable for being the first jet fighter used operationally by the U.S. Army Air Force during the Second World War. Shooting stars played a critical role in the opening weeks of the North Korean invasion, conducting 70% of all combat sorties by U.S. aircraft. However, the F-80 needed advanced airfields with well-maintained runways, which were lacking on the Korean peninsula. This meant that, despite their impressive range, shooting stars were limited to a 45-minute combat period over a target area before returning to their airfields in Japan. But a significant shift in the aerial warfare landscape occurred in November 1950, with China's entry into the war and the introduction of the formidable Soviet-designed MiG-15. The MiG-15's superior performance eclipsed that of the F-80, rendering the shooting star's air-to-air -air combat abilities largely obsolete. As a result, the arrival of the MiG-15 brought a renewed challenge for control of the skies over the infamous MiG Alley along the North Korea-China border. In response to this threat, the United States rushed its F-86 Sabre jets into the theater of operations just a few weeks later, in December of that year. Shortly after its frontline introduction, the F-86 engaged in combat against the MiG-15s on December 17, 1950. The F-86 was equipped with six M3 50 caliber machine guns, a later version of those used in World War II, firing lighter shells at a higher rate. In contrast, the MiG-15 carried two 23mm and 137mm cannon designed to destroy bombers, firing heavy shells at a slower rate. In the high-speed dogfights of MiG Alley, communist pilots struggled to hit their American adversaries, while Sabre pilots could sometimes deal only light damage due to their lack of firepower. For the duration of the war, the U.S. Air Force grappled with the challenge of deploying a sufficient number of Sabres to maintain aerial dominance over the Korean Peninsula. Despite ramping production, including expanding manufacturing capabilities to Canada, F-86 pilots frequently found themselves outnumbered by the MiG-15 at ratios often reaching 3 or 4 to 1. In terms of performance, the MiG-15 and F-86 were comparable. Superior at high altitudes, the MiG-15 could outclimb the F-86 and fly 5,000 feet higher. This often allowed MiG pilots to possess an altitude advantage and disengage by climbing beyond the reach of the F-86. However, below 30,000 feet, the Sabre was more agile, boasting hydraulic flight controls and better gunsight technology. The F-86 would usually escape from a MiG-15 through a tight descending turn of approximately 6G, a maneuver that was helped by the supply of G-suits to U.S. pilots. 
something that was absent in the Soviet-backed air forces. One commonly cited statistic from the U.S. Air Force states that Sabres shot down 792 MiG-15s at a loss of only 78 aircraft, implying a kill-to-death ratio of roughly 10 to 1 in favor of the F-86, though this figure has been disputed. In the end, the superior training and skills of U.S. pilots ensured that American and U.N. forces mostly dominated the skies over the peninsula throughout the war. Close air support played a vital role in the Korean War. U.S. Air Force aircraft flew 57,665 close support sorties out of 720,980 missions, while a third of Marine Corps sorties were flown in support of ground units. American forces used close airborne firepower to influence the ground situation in different stages of the conflict, from stemming enemy advances to aiding UN offensive operations. World War II-era aviation designs proved particularly useful in this role. When North Korean forces invaded South Korea in June 1950, the primary U.S. aircraft available for close air support was the propeller-driven F-51 Mustang. The F-51 was ideal for rugged airfields and short gravel airstrips in Korea, meaning that it could loiter over target areas for two to three hours and carry heavy payloads. In the Battle of the Pusan Perimeter, when UN and US forces were on the brink of defeat, holding a 100-mile defensive line against the North Korean onslaught, the F-51 was the sole American fighter conducting operations directly from bases within the Korean Peninsula. Three of the seven F-51 squadrons available to the US Air Force at the time were based in Korea. This strategic positioning allowed for extended patrol periods and quick response times to evolving combat situations. As such, the F-51 was vital in maintaining the UN defensive line. But this close air support role and its relatively slow speed meant that the F-51 suffered a high loss rate. During the conflict, 172 aircraft were shot down over Korea, the most of any US Air Force plane. Following China's entry to the Korean War, the AD Sky Raider began to take on a more prominent role. Its significant loiter time and heavy payload proved highly influential in the close air support function, offering precision and power where needed. Over time, the Sky Raider established itself as the cornerstone of naval airstrike units in Korea, with the first operational deployment launching from the USS Valley Forge. Its capacity to utilize a broad array of ordnance of up to 8,000 pounds or 3,600 kilos made it suitable for engagements against a range of North Korean targets. Consequently, the Sky Raider was recognized as one of the world's most effective close support aircraft during that period. Alongside the Sky Raider, the F-4U Corsair was another naval aircraft used extensively in a ground attack role during the conflict. Over 600 Corsairs served during the war, performing 41,000 combat sorties and accounting for about 40% of all U.S. naval aviation missions. Marine Corps pilot Jesse G. Fulmar was even credited with shooting down a MiG-15 in his Corsair. The U.S. strategic bombing campaign evolved throughout the Korean War, employing aircraft such as the B-29 Superfortress and B-26 Invader to fulfill various objectives. In the early months of the conflict, B-29 Superfortresses targeted North Korea's industrial infrastructure, intending to weaken its war-making capabilities. Targets included factories, power plants, and transportation hubs. The Superfortress, initially designed as a high-altitude, long-range strategic bomber in World War II, showed its versatility by carrying out close support missions for ground troops and bombing bridges across the Yalu River. As the war continued, especially after China entered the conflict, the role of strategic bombing evolved to encompass interdiction missions. This aimed to disrupt enemy supply lines by targeting transportation routes, bridges, and rail marshalling yards. For these roles, the B-26 Invader, a twin-engine medium bomber, excelled due to its speed, maneuverability, and ability to carry a sizable payload of bombs. It was particularly effective during nighttime low-level bombing and strafing missions, causing significant disruption to enemy supplies and troop movements. By 1952, when the war had reached a stalemate on the ground, strategic bombing assumed an even more prominent role. The U.S. implemented a selective destruction policy, or air pressure, targeting high-value economic sites to raise the cost of war for the communists. The superfortresses and invaders were instrumental in these campaigns, striking at crucial economic transportation, communication, and supply centers and infrastructure. This included hydroelectric dams, the U.S. started targeting North Korea's power supply as part of its air pressure campaign. These attacks in particular caused substantial flooding, 
adding a significant humanitarian crisis to the military damage. In addition, some of the larger cities in North Korea were heavily bombed. Pyongyang was a significant target, with over 75% of the city destroyed. In the end, the bombing of the North Korean capital was halted, as there were no longer any targets deemed worthy of hitting. As a result, the U.S. strategic bombing campaign and its impact on the conflict remain topics of debate to this day. Noteworthy innovations occurred in strategic bombing tactics during the Korean War. Faced with the threat from enemy jet fighters, particularly the MiG-15, the U.S. Air Force adapted by conducting extensive precision bombing at night. Moreover, using smaller tactical aircraft like the B-26 Invader for strategic bombing heralded a shift in air warfare, paving the way for multi-role aircraft in future conflicts.